Hello everybody, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to the very second episode of the Esports News Show. We hope you guys all enjoy, and as well as all you guys who are new to the channel, a reminder, we will be having videos on this channel for now for Esports News every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and a lot of breaking news happening throughout the entire episode. So as always, we hope you guys all enjoy, and let's get into it. And in big rumors right now in the CSGO scene, we do have the big question maybe being answered about where Mixwell will finally go. Of course, his stint with Optic Gaming back in 2016, 2017 most notably, and a very powerful player, even though his short stint with G2, of course, was very short-lived. The big question as to where he'll go, as he has posted to Twitter several times in the past about not wanting to go to a North American team and apparently not convinced to stay with North and the European roster over there. Even after winning DreamHack Valencia just a couple weeks ago, the big question might have finally been answered as rumors have surfaced as he might be going to an all-Spanish organization and team with their roster on screen he might be joining Movistar Riders now as to why he'd actually go there and of course how would they pay him as well Movistar is actually the wide widest known telecom company across Spain and that's where the money would come from now of course it will be joined by Soaker and Alex formerly Mo Movistar himself as well as Lowell from Mouse Sports so it's definitely not your tier one or top roster you would think he would join but when it comes to pride a prideful roster out there this would definitely represent his home country well and those questions might be answered by this weekend or sometime next week as to where mix will Will finally go and we'll find out according to sources sometime very soon if he does decide to go to an all Spanish team now also bouncing off that guys of course for the face it major happening in September we do have our minors currently going on the four of the eight teams have already been solidified throughout the CIS as well as the American regions those teams on screen for all of you we do have still two scenes left though to be answered the Asian minor concluding just in two days time will should have the updates for you guys on Friday's episode as well as that even more importantly the European minor will also be solidified by Saturday so it's gonna be cool to see what teams do eventually go through and on top of that I do have to mention of course the return of Captain Mo if you guys remember it was actually Mo himself accordingly uh, to that Ty Lu roster fell off his segue back in May he has now been out for just over two months and returns just in time guys still on crutches as well he did manage to fracture his femur but he will be playing the minor with Ty Lu and ever since his return I'm not gonna lie the team has been looking very dominant as of the current results it does seem that Ty Lu and Renegades will go through although it's not guaranteed we do have tainted minds and scars absolute playing closely as well but it seems likely those two top teams going into it will likely go through to the face it major from the Asian minor now as well as we have plenty of European dominant teams going through it's always an upset to see the European minor and we're gonna see what teams actually are solidified by the weekend's time now also bouncing off that and big news for WESG payments we've discussed this in the past a lot throughout 2016 WESG as well as 2017 the tournament organizers themselves have had a hard time paying out their at playing out their athletes or their teams on top of that and they've actually finally released a statement about why it was such an issue now according to them the two biggest reasons are apparently teams not signing the correct forms that is according to them I find that tough to believe but also another big one with WSG being such a large prize pool with any winnings over $40,000 for each team which a lot of those teams did come away with $40,000 or more the Chinese Bureau must actually accordingly approve all of those payments so it does take a lot of time and again we've seen this in the past these delayed payments from WSG and at least at this point in time they're actually making public statements I am very sure most of these teams if not all of them will be paid out and as of currently of the 16 teams who actually won prize money from the tournament almost half have actually been paid out so although it will take time at least they're actually releasing public statements and they should be paid sometime soon now also very last in today's CSGO news segment we do want to mention as well the current rise in Hydra prices out there of course Operation Hydra ending eight to nine months ago and those cases have actually been rising ever since to a stabilized price right around now of four dollars now marketing this I kind of you partnered this with two two main segments right now of course that delay from our last operation case and on top of that today ironically enough today as a point of you guys watching this we are now at our longest period of time ever since our last case release in CSGO so that could also partner why this case has actually risen in price so much if you guys are looking to invest I would suggest probably delaying it a bit until our next case release in CSGO which probably is gonna happen sometime soon but I just can't recommend you guys investing in them right now they do seem to be quite high of a price and they probably will dip down low again but no one's to really say what they could go to in the future they could very well be one of our most expensive CSGO cases of all time given two or three years and the most important Dota 2 news out there, of course, we finally finished up the Bot TI 2018 after two full weeks of all the all of the heroes coming together and clashing in a 5v5 single lane, single life tournament. We have finally decided which hero in that particular segment is actually the best, and it was no surprise to see the Elder Titan finally take it away. We'll break down that bracket in a second, but as well to break down the tournament, like I said previously, a 5v5 single lane, single life, but they were actually all best of three series with each round actually scaling. So the first of which was actually going to be only Ironwood branches for round one. 
Uh, then we saw round two go to 10K gold budget, and round three, finally, the last round of any of the any of the bots, which many of them did go to that final round, was actually a 20K gold budget. And in the end, though, it was the Elder Titan. Actually, ironically enough, they fell to the Abaddon in the semifinals. They went through the loser's bracket and surprised Phoenix. Phoenix themselves, uh, 16 seed, maybe not should have been there. And it was Elder Titan back again in the finals, though, against Abaddon and redeeming themselves this time. And it actually went to max three, and it was very, very fun to see, as you guys can watch as well. We do have finally crowned our Bot TI 2018 champion, which is the Elder Titan. And we finally received a Dota 2 update last night, although, unfortunately enough, it was not going to be the biggest update we wanted for Immortal Treasure 3. Although, for all of you guys who are Battle Bundle or Battle Pass owners who are above the level 16 requirements, you have actually unlocked some brand new skins on screen for all of you, and they will be the finally the promise of Eminent Revival skins. And again, unfortunately enough, a lot of our audience probably is not 615 levels and higher, but you did immediately unlock those skins. And I still do think sometime in the next week or so, we should have the release of Immortal Treasure 3. And of course, we need that surge for the Dota 2 International Prize Pool, slowly approaching that $25 million mark. Do I think we're going to break it? I still do. I think we can all agree $30 million is probably out the window. But the ultimate goal right now is just to surpass the TI-17 TI prize pool, which I think we're well on our way to do. Although, again, Valve teasing us with these updates, it's just not the updates we want. But maybe in some updates we finally do want, that of course in Fortnite updates with the V5 patch released just yesterday, we did have some big weapon changes out there. And again, Epic Games continues to surprise us all. Again, one of the few companies out there who gives us a preview of the weapons they will release ahead of time. And that was of course the Unsilenced SMG finally in the game. To give you guys kind of a TLDR, it seems to be just like the Silenced SMG, but even better and of course even less rare. The only big difference there is of course a 30 bullet clip as compared to a 35 bullet clip. So we're gonna see if this actually needs any nerfs in the future as of recent gameplay. It doesn't like it's going to need to and it seems to be pretty well balanced in terms of range and damage now unfortunately enough though it is a very sad day around here because my personal favorite me uh, weapon itself the tactical smgs have officially been vaulted to the weapon vault now this could prelude to maybe future things coming out there possibly a new smg like the p90 which has been rumored in the past but of course unfortunately for now the tactical smgs will be vaulted and not be going back into the game and unfortunately enough this seems to be one of the first times we've seen so far in epic's history they've actually vaulted a weapon that was pretty balanced Although up close, of course, that fire rate was, was pretty buffed and, and, of course, pretty OP. It did seem to be one of the first weapons vaulted so soon that it's actually pretty balanced all around. So what do you guys think about that? But also, for all of you auto snipers out there, a huge buff to auto snipers and both their variants now receiving a big damage buff of 12 damage. So, again, they take away, of course, the tactile SMGs. They didn't give us a new unsilenced SMG as well. And they've now buffed all auto snipers in the game, continuing weapon changes throughout the V5 patch updates. They look good so far, but we'll see what happens in the future though with those dang shotguns. And Riot continues to release frequent patch updates, although despite recent criticism, I'm sure many of you guys saw Double Lift and Reckless. Double Lift himself actually making a dedicated video to the actual topic, bringing a lot of eyes out there as to how many updates Riot really does need. And of course, the frequent meta change really disturbing pros out there. I'll link that video down below for all of you guys to watch as well. It's definitely a good one to watch, but as well, we of course had some patch updates just yesterday for League of Legends. And let's get into all of those and break down just what changed for all those characters out there. The first of which definitely much needed was actually Aatrox. He received a bit of a a nerf which could be seen uh, from a small to a medium nerf here with some early game reductions to both his base health as well as his Q damage including to minions which is actually a pretty big thing there also early game recharge rate for his E has been reduced and increased later on in the game and very lastly his Q recast timer is now frozen while being revived so we'll find out if this is actually enough to stop his early game bully now next up we also saw Fizz with a bit of changes himself which could be seen as a slight buff but also maybe a slight nerf depending on upon the gameplay itself his W is now base damage has been increased still doing damage Damage over time but now a lot of that damage has been front-loaded to his character if his W kills an opponent mana cost will be partially refunded and if not his basic attacks are now empowered for a full five seconds with increased damage and Jinx probably saw the littlest rework out of all these champions so far mentioned has just received a small base health buff to deal with early game bullying it doesn't seem to be very substantial we'll see how that affects in the long term and maybe Riot will come back and actually buff these these marksman champions a bit more with base health and on top of that to actually kind of balance it out she actually saw a small decrease in health growth per level throughout the game. And then we had Karma who also saw a small buff with an increase in both her base armor as well as her mana regen, although it does seem the base armor buff was actually quite substantial and also an increase to her inner flame splash radius with only a minor decrease to its damage in the early game. So we're going to see if this is actually enough to hit, have of course her champion selection increased a bit, but it does seem to be a, a bit substantial here in terms of buff. And in terms of champion selection as well, we had Scion receive probably the littlest buff of anyone here. We actually received minor increases to his late game base damage as well as his damage ratio for his Q. 
few. Now, we're not really sure if these are going to be substantial enough to really fully increase his pick selection or his, his selection percentage throughout, but it definitely going to be worth some testing out there in the future. Now, very lastly as well, we also saw Twitch. He rounded out all the champion updates, and again, like his former marksman Jinx, a very, very similar update here. He saw some base health damage, uh, some base health buffs, as well as on top of that, some, some decreases in his overall growth or his base health growth throughout the entire game. So very similar to many marksmen out there. We're going to see some smaller updates, hopefully in the future, to more marksmen, as of course we do have complaints about them, of course, being uh, seeing a little less action so far and being a little bit too bullied heavy uh, in the early game. So we're going to see if more changes do come for Riot and of course and some other champions out there. But as of right now, it seems to be very small nerfs, very small buffs, nothing quite substantial besides Aatrox's changes. And for all of you Overwatch fans watching this video right now, you need to click away because at the point of this video going live, there should be Overwatch League playoffs going on very shortly. Of course, that's the LA Valiant versus the London Spitfire, and unfortunately enough for Philadelphia Fusion, very unfortunately, they take on the number one New York Excelsior today, and if you guys can actually make those matchups, everyone is talking about that in terms of even real people you would not expect. We also had Jim Kramer from CNBC, also the host of Mad Money, if you recognize his face on screen. He even took some airtime on CNBC yesterday to talk about the Overwatch League and how he's going to be watching it as well. So if you guys are currently watching this video, do me a favor, click away. We have some great playoff matches. This, to, of course, today being Wednesday and this weekend, we do have the Overwatch League Grand Finals, which I cannot wait to see. So please leave a comment down below who's going to make it through. In my own case, I do want to see upsets, guys. I would love to see, of course, the Philadelphia Fusion pull off the giant upset, but I just cannot see it happening. But again, uh, I want you guys to actually watch the video as well. This is actually on a live news station, CNBC. Jim Cramer takes some airtime to talk about the Overwatch League. Do you know that, okay, this, I have an app, what's it called? Overly, Overwatch League. This thing is a killer, and I have really donated the rest of my life to watching. Philadelphia's done quite well at least. I don't know. I Overwatch is good, what you are going to play Excelsior? Yeah, you're cool. And we also failed to mention for Rocket League news out there, this past weekend we did have the Northern Arena and the Rocket League Invitational, their second one so far for Rocket League, a $50,000 prize pool. And to not lie, we saw some very dominant teams, in particular two dominant teams, the first of which was Dignitas, of course, that former Gale Force roster, winning Rocket League championships back in June, and that was also NRG. NRG, the only team to really give them a run throughout the entire tournament. Now, it was actually pretty early on, Dignitas sent NRG to loser's bracket, and a very valiant effort as NRG climbed their way back up all the way through the bracket, and unfortunately enough, though, they were met with Dignitas again in the Grand Finals, and Dignitas looking unstoppable. Their first win ever since Rocket League Championships. If you guys remember, the same team kind of had a dry streak, though, before those championships as well. Dry streak no more. They have now come away with their second title in the past month. This one, of course, taking home $15,000 of the $50,000 prize pool and taking down NRG in that best of seven in a dominant 4-1 finish. So what do you guys think about this? Dignitas looking very well going on, and of course, kind of a dry period so far throughout Rocket League. We have some, some bigger NBC tournaments coming up later in the summer, but Dig again, looking dominant so far, NRG and uh, Dignitas by far and away your number one and two teams, at least at this event. That's going to do it for today's episode of Esports News. We hope you guys all enjoy, and we'll see you all back here Friday for another episode. Do us a favor, leave a comment down below. What did we miss? What can we do better in the future? And as always, we hope you guys all enjoy, and we'll see you Friday.